What is up, people? Welcome back and welcome to the next curve in our ADAS model, the one and only short run aggregate supply curve. Be sure to smash that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. All right, so the last two videos have been all about aggregate demand, but now we turn our attention to the supply side of things. So let's jump right in. Now, not surprisingly, the SRAS curve is upward sloping, indicating a positive relationship between the price level and the quantity of goods and services supplied. And if you've been with me since the beginning, this should surprise exactly no one. Sellers like high prices and are willing to sell more at higher prices than they are at lower prices. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. But again, this is a macro model. So there's another important thing to point out about our SRAS curve. As we move upwards along the SRAS model, we can see on the x-axis, this means aggregate output is increasing. And as aggregate output increases, that means that unemployment decreases because more workers are needed to produce the increased level of output. This means that there is a short-run trade-off between inflation, a higher price level, and unemployment. But now the real question, and the one I know you've been wondering at least since you clicked this video, is what do you mean by short run, and why are we making that distinction? After all, aggregate demand is just aggregate demand. There is no short run in front of it. And in fact, that's the key question, so let's get right down to it. The short run refers to a time period in which all production costs, such as inputs and wages, are taken as fixed or unchanged. The next video is about the long run, but based on what I just said, you'd be correct to assume that the assumption we just made about the short run will disappear in the long run. Remember again that this is a macro model, so it's describing the supply of all goods in the economy, but it might be helpful to think of this in terms of a micro example. Take Bob's Burgers, a family owned burger joint. His name is Bob Burger. Um, it's not. It is. <laughs> it isn't, no. Imagine the overall price level rises, pushing up the price of Bob's Burgers. They slide up along their supply curve and are willing to sell more burgers at the new higher price. So far, this is just basic supply and demand. But here's the key thing. How is Bob's Burgers able to afford to increase their production of hamburgers? We know they have a profit incentive to do so because of the higher price level. But the reason they're actually able to do so is because in the short run, we're taking all of their production costs as fixed. When Bob increases output, he hires an additional worker. Undoubtedly, he hires Zeke. Not that Jimmy Jr. That kid's the worst. In the short run, since wages are fixed, it means that even though the price of his output has increased, the price he has to pay for wages hasn't changed, so it's worth it for him to increase his output and hire an additional worker. Stay tuned for the next video because what I just said is only true in the short run. In the short run, nominal wages are sticky. Sticky wages means that nominal wages are slow to fall even when unemployment is high and slow to rise even when unemployment is low. This is actually one of the keys to the entire course, so let's dig down on this a little bit further. We've established that as output rises, unemployment falls. Eventually, this is going to lead to higher nominal wages as firms compete for workers, but that isn't going to happen yet. In the short run, nominal wages are sticky, meaning that they're slow to rise even when unemployment is low. And this leads to an upward sloping SRAS curve where firms increase their output as the price level rises in the short run. But if you see where this is going, you might realize the story eventually is going to change. But again, more on that in the next video. For now though, let's finish up this lesson and identify our shifters of the SRAS curve. First up and most significantly is changes in nominal wages. When nominal wages rise, firms can't afford to hire as many workers, so the SRAS curve shifts left since this obviously impacts how much can be produced. On the other hand, when nominal wages fall, firms can hire more workers, shifting the SRAS curve to the right. Secondly, and pretty similarly, changes in inflationary expectations also shift the SRAS curve. When people and businesses expect higher inflation, nominal wages increase, and this shifts the SRAS curve leftward. If people and businesses expected lower inflation, we would see nominal wages fall, and that would shift the SRAS curve to the right. Changes in resource prices and the availability of resources can also affect the SRAS curve. I want to point out here that because this is a macro model, we're talking about resources of economy-wide significance, like oil prices. If those prices increase, 
the SRS curve will shift left since firms will have less money to spend on other parts of production like hiring workers. And if those resource prices decrease, the SRS curve will shift to the right. Changes in government policies toward businesses can also affect the SRAS curve. If the government raises business taxes or imposes strict regulations, that increases costs for the firm, shifting the SRAS curve to the left. If the government provides business subsidies or cuts taxes for businesses, this shifts the SRAS curve to the right. And lastly, changes in productivity and technology can also affect the SRAS curve. If productivity increases, the SRAS curve would shift right since now more can be produced using the same inputs, or if productivity decreases, the SRAS curve shifts to the left. Okay, so I know that's five different shifters, but far and away the most important ones are nominal wages and inflationary expectations. That's what I want you to focus on the most. The others might come up from time to time on multiple choice questions, but the other two, they are the key to understanding this model, especially when we start discussing the transition from the short run to the long run. Guess what we're going to do in the next video? Well, that's it for the short run. So in the next video, it's on to the long run. Until next time, this has been a La Money production. And thanks again for watching. Please hit that like button. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the description to get links to the answers to these questions, as well as notes for this video and other great study aids. And I will see you in the next video.